Well, this is exciting. Well, congratulations. Thank you so much. It is really, it is exciting. I will definitely be here a lot. <laughs> uh, well, hi, this is Shalonda Turner with Live Life in Style and Houston Fashion Bloggers, and I'm here interviewing Julie Rhodes at her boutique opening down here in, I think we're in West U, West University, Russell University place here. And so tell us a little bit about... It's fashion and home, and so when did you? How did you get into the business? When did you start first start this company and this concept, this idea? Sure. Well, when I lived in New York City, I really got my start in fashion. Um, I graduated from Parsons School of Design. I did my master's there, and I uh, worked for Christian Dior as a buyer. And there, it's merchandising roles, so it was working closely with the Paris design team and buying for the North American market. From there, I worked with WGSN, doing trend forecasting and futures work, which I really loved. And when I moved to Houston with my husband's work, um, opening a store was really a way for me to bring the branding and the buying and the, all that into one place. And I had a business partner at first. We had a store in River Oaks. Mm -hmm. And this is one that I've done on my own. So do you still have the store in River Oaks? No. Are you 100% here now? 100% here. Okay. And what about, tell me about the items that you have here and how do you pick what you're, what you're, is it all you or is it, are no. you bringing in any other brands or anything? Yeah, you actually everything. So the service that I really offer women is like to style them uh, for their events or their everyday life and to help them decorate their homes. So none of the pieces in here are actually my personal designs. Um, just to clarify that. Okay. Because yeah. I was... I was I'm, yeah. Okay. So um, I'll work with women to put together custom pillows or to custom uh, make a couch or... But really, it's like, you know, women come to me, and not all of my clients, but, you know, they know their social calendar and they know their wardrobe needs as much as six months in advance. We're like, I need these and these and these things. So sometimes we can pull things that I have on the floor, but often I'll just bring special things in for them or I'll think of them when I go on a buying trip and I'll buy just for them. So that's sort of the way that I work with women in a really one-on-one -on -one personal way and try and cater to them and also to, like, get them things that nobody else has. Like, what really informs my buying is, one, I'm a mother, one, my clients are mothers and you know we want clothes that we can wear to the football game and to drop our kids off from school but then we have a luncheon or we have work to do and we need pieces that are really versatile that are affordable and that are easy to care for so I'm really attracted to made in America US sourced good quality construction you can machine wash it or you can hand wash it and dry it and like I will wear the blouse I'm wearing which is made by a crew and it's a washable silk I'm wearing this tonight for a cocktail reception, but I was wearing this earlier today with jeans and Converse. And, and I swapped my earrings and my shoes, and that is it. So I rely on the clothes in my closet to be worn multiple different ways because I'm too busy and, you know, all that to have all these separate wardrobes. Right, nobody so has time to stop home and yeah. change in between. We've got to go from, I came from work, so yeah. I totally get that. And I also don't <laughs> want to spend thousands of dollars. You know, I want to get good value for my money. And so I want to offer that to women in Houston. The other thing that is exciting to me is that there's, I mean, there's so much incredible style here. And women are so excited about fashion that I love that. But there are brands that I didn't find here when I moved here that I loved from New York or from France, my, where I spent a lot of time. And so, like, Misha Nonu has this wonderful label, Nonu, and that's made in the Garment District in New York. And Langenic makes things in San Francisco. And we've got Obaki out of Vancouver. And just these gorgeous pieces that are so affordable and so wonderful that nobody else in Houston is selling. So I'm really excited to have that stuff. You have that's the unique, really unique. unique items, and that, that's good because... Um, I know the Houston fashion scene has grown over the last three years, but it's, we're still, we're not there. We're not at the New York or the LA levels, of course. So it was neat to be able to have boutiques like like yours to bring in these other designers and brands that we may never have known about, you know, instead yeah. of shopping at the stores that we've been shopping at, everybody's having the same things. It's yeah. neat to be like unique and like, oh, where'd you get that? Well, you can only get it at Julie right. Road store. <laughs> and it's just fun. I mean, and I like supporting these designers too. I mean, um, she uh, gives to her foundation in Africa and um, my first life undergrad and my first master's was in economics and I lived in Africa and I worked in an NGO and we did micro loans to help irrigation and small farmers and all this so that's something close to my heart and I
were in economics. How did you go from there to go into Parsons and then ending up at Christian Dior? Like I people know. would die for that. I job. always <laughs> wanted to go. I always, I, when I grew up, people asked me what I wanted to do. I said I wanted to be a fashion designer, but it was just not something my parents really were like, "Yeah, honey, you go be a fashion." They're like, "You need to do something practical." So I did, mm -hmm. and I was successful at it. And I woke up, you know, eight years in, and was like, "This is not what I wanted <laughs> to do," you know. And at that point, I just said, "You know what? It's time." So I just made a career change, mm -hmm. and that's when I went back to Parsons and Dior was a very natural connection for me. My dad's French. Um, I spent a lot of time in the summers in the place where Dior spent time growing up as a child. So I knew that area. I knew the house he grew up in and I interned with them and it just went from there. Awesome. It was just a really natural fit. Well, what kind of rec um, suggestions would you give to up-and-coming fashion designers or people who are trying to get into the industry or any pitfalls that you hit that, you know, they may try to avoid even in just opening a boutique or, mm. you know. Gosh, that's such a loaded question. <laughs> I mean, getting into the industry, um, I think the biggest misconception about fashion is that it's glamorous and it's all about having good style. Understanding numbers and understanding um, margin and, and how to allocate you know, this is what I'm going to invest in this versus that is, is critical. And today when the internet is so prevalent, you know, to really distinguish myself as a boutique or a retailer, I have to actually offer something beyond the clothes that I'm selling. Because really, if someone wants Langenic or even the brands that I have in my store, like they can probably buy it online if they search hard enough. So, you know, it's like branding and, and, and defining yourself and your, what you're offering and what you're, you know, that is a really big thing. So I would say focusing on branding and storytelling and really my economics background and the math, and this is like, it's invaluable to me. It really is. Because at the end of the day, this looks beautiful, but... It's there, a lot of planning and thought went into it from a business side. Yeah, it's definitely still a business at the end of the day, oh, yeah. bottom line, and you got to know your market, you know your audience. My background's in engineering. I work as an engineer during the that day. That's amazing. <laughs> and so I, I do fashion there at night. There women engineers. There are not enough of us. Um, so I'm still pushing with that career, but I definitely, and it's so funny, like I think a lot of people really think there's a definitive line between even economics and fashion, no. or, but there's so much crossover. Like oh, oh, yeah. It's like the way I think in engineering really helps and I'm sure like the economics like you said helped you put this together you found a need a niche and everything mm -hmm. like that so. absolutely well that's great well it was very nice meeting with you I don't nice want to take to you, you any more time from your party here oh thanks for interviewing